Rules for limits. We just learned how to find limits by tables. Tables, not the, not the easiest method, not the best method, most of the time to find limits, fortunately. So this rule here you're going to enjoy. For functions composed of addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, powers, and roots, limits may be evaluated by direct substitution, provided that the resulting expression is defined. So what it's saying is, whatever x is approaching, like in this case, it's approaching c, we can just take c and put it right in there for x, resulting in f of c. So let's do an example of evaluating limit by direct substitution. This problem says we're supposed to find the limit of the square root of x as x approaches 4. Well, this is pretty simple. All we have to do is replace x with 4. When substituting, you should use parentheses. Square root of 4 is 2. So we would say the limit as x approaches 4 of the square root of x equals 2. Direct substitution. Second example. We're supposed to find the limit as x approaches 6 of the fraction x squared divided by x plus 3. Well, let's use direct substitution since the directions say to. We're going to replace the x with 6, because that's what x is approaching. When you substitute, you should use parentheses. 6 squared is 36. 6 plus 3 is 9. 36 divided by 9 is 4. Thus, the limit as x approaches 6 of our function, x squared over x plus 3, equals 4. Third example, find this limit by direct substitution. So we are going to replace the x's with 3's. When you substitute, you're supposed to use parentheses. 3 squared is 9. 4 times 3 is 12. 2 times 9 is 18. Minus 12 plus 1 is minus 11. So this gives us 9. No, it gives us 7. So when you write your answer, write the question and the answer. So the limit as x approaches 3 of our function, I'm just going to write the function like this, it equals 7. Example 4, find this limit by direct substitution. We're going to replace all the x's with 1's. So we get 1 squared minus 1 over 1 minus 1. It gives us 1 minus 1 over 0, which is 0 over 0. Now we're in quite the pickle. Dividing by 0 is undefined. So we tried to evaluate this limit by substitution, and it's undefined. It didn't work. So that's one reason why we, we use tables, because not every problem you can substitute and find what the limit is. So does this limit exist? It looks like it doesn't. But there's something else we can do in order to solve these problems if direct substitution doesn't work. Let's relook at this same problem from a little bit different perspective. So a different perspective is evaluate the limit instead of by direct substitution, by simplifying, then by substituting. Well, how can this be simplified? Well, notice as I'm trying to simplify it, I haven't evaluated the limit yet. I have to continue to write the limit as x approaches 1 while I'm simplifying it. Once you sub 1 in for x, then you don't write limit anymore, but we haven't done that yet. Our numerator factors. It's a difference of perfect squares. So x minus 1 and x plus 1. Our denominator is already simplified. We can divide the numerator and denominator by x minus 1, leaving us with the limit as x approaches 1 of x plus 1. If your function is more than one term, we have two terms here. You must put that whole function in parentheses, otherwise it's not correct. Now let's see if substitution works. We simplify, now let's try to substitute. If we substitute, we're going to replace the x with 1, because it says 
x approaches 1 here. And then we have the plus 1 that was at the end of that. That gives us 2. This limit does exist. It appeared by direct substitution initially that it didn't. But by simplifying first and then substituting, we found that this limit does exist. So now that we've found the limit, we're supposed to graph the function. Well, what function? Well, it's the function x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. But um, in simplifying that, we had crossed off an x minus 1. What happens when you cancel something from the numerator and denominator? It means there's a hole in the graph. So you take what we crossed off and you set it equal to 0, and you'll find there's a hole at the x value 1. To find the y value of that hole, take what's left of your function, which is y equals x plus 1. Because remember, when we evaluated this limit, we ended up with, after we canceled, the limit as x approaches 1 of x plus 1. So that's what's left. That means this is y or f of x. So to find the appropriate y value of this hole, we're going to replace the x here with 1. And we get there's a hole at the ordered pair 1, 2. So we're supposed to graph y equals x plus 1, but there's a hole at the ordered pair 1, 2. So graphing this we have our x and y axis. We have a y-intercept of 1. We have a slope of 1. So we graph this, and we have this hole at 1, 2. Here's what our graph looks like. And you can see why direct substitution wouldn't work. If you put 1 in to this, it just falls right through this hole. But you can see as you approach this hole from the left and from the right, as x gets closer to 1, the y value is getting closer and closer to 2. So that finishes number 1. We found the limit, and we graphed the function. Let's evaluate this one by simplifying and then substituting. So if notice if we were to have used direct substitution, 5 minus 5 is 0. You're dividing by 0. We can't do that. So let's see if we can simplify it. We have not evaluated the limit yet, so we're going to write the limit as x approaches 5. Our numerator has a GCF of 2x, leaving an x minus 5 in the parentheses. We have an x minus 5 in our denominator. If you divide something by itself, you're left with 1. Therefore, this simplifies to the limit as x approaches 5 of 2x. 2x is just one term. You don't need parentheses. Now we can use substitution. Once you substitute, you no longer write the limit as x approaches 5. 2 times 5 is 10. So our answer for this is the limit as x approaches 5 of 2x squared minus 10x over x minus 5 equals 10. Then it says after you find this limit, you're supposed to graph the function. So let's graph this. Now when I say graph this, I'm referring to uh, the simplified version of this. So we had, at one point, the limit as x approaches 5 of 2x. So what does that mean? That means that we're saying that y equals 2x, because this location of the 2x, that's the function. Also, we had crossed off x minus 5s. What happens when you cancel from the numerator and denominator? It means there's a hole in the graph. So whatever you cancel from the top and the bottom, x minus 5, set equal to 0. So there's a hole at x equals 5. To find the y value of that hole, you just take this 5 and you plug it in here to what's left from your function. We get y equals 2 times 5, which is 10. So we have a hole at the ordered pair 2, 10. Let's graph this. To graph this, we have a y-intercept of 0. This is in slope-intercept form. And we have a slope of 2. 
So we make our line like so, and we have a hole at the ordered pair 2, 10. So this is the graph of our line. Let's make sure we label our y-intercept. So this is the graph.